Welcome to Dream Farm. On today's episode, I want to talk about pruning apple trees. This is going to be the last episode in my apple series that we've been doing here on the channel. I'm, like I said before, I'm pretty excited about you know the potential of these apple trees to make this farm better, not only for you know for us because we like to eat apples, but more importantly for the deer and probably to a lesser extent for other wildlife that eat apples. The final step in doing this really well is pruning. And I am by no means an expert on pruning apple trees, but fortunately, like a lot of the other stuff that I do here, I know people who are. So on the rest of this episode, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Dr. Jesse Randall. And he's now with uh, Michigan State University. He was at uh, Iowa State University at the time that uh, he came by and helped me out with some pruning and a fellow named Eli Cook. And Eli is a commercial orchard uh, apple producer out on the East Coast. And he's got a huge operation out there, uh, very well known and, and highly regarded for his uh, quality of his apple trees. And I uh, had a chance also to get Eli uh, on the property a few years back to show me his techniques for pruning apple trees. So I'm gonna turn the rest of the episode over to uh, Jesse and Eli. Dream Farm is brought to you by Whitetail Institute Food Plot Blends, Hunt Stand Pro Whitetail App, Hoyt Archery, Wildlife Farming, and PH Outdoors. In this next segment, we're going to talk about pruning apple trees, growing apple trees, uh, how to produce high quality food plots, more permanent type food plots on your, on your deer hunting ground. And I've got some experts with me today. I've got Eli Cook and his wife Misty and his family here, two daughters and, and their son. And they're in the fruit business, the apple business out in West Virginia. I'm gonna hand the wireless mic over to Eli here in a little bit. And he's gonna walk us through this whole process of, of uh, you know, where to grow them, how to grow them, how to plant them, how to prune them, uh, how to maintain these things so that you can produce the same kind of, of uh, uh, great apple production that he's been getting out east. We're back at one of the trees now, and uh, Eli was throwing out some ideas on uh, fertilizing. Yeah, on a young tree, you want to be you want to be careful because you can damage the roots, but you can still use like a triple nineteen at maybe maybe a pound per tree, and just kind of scatter it, you know, around around the sides. You don't want to get right up close to it, and you want to wait um, about a month after you plant, so you don't. Um, so kind of the ground settles and it doesn't immediately go down there. But on a tree this size, I would use um, probably as much as two pounds of urea, which would be about a pound of actual. And same thing, just kind of scatter it around. And I would do that probably this time of year. And then um, you could actually, if you really want to throw some vigor in this tree, you could come back with another pound um, probably towards the beginning of May and really get these things get these things going. So. This should be a productive tree by age nine, right? Yeah, if, I mean, judging by the looks of it, it's probably on like a 111 root or something. This this tree should produce, if it was in a commercial setting, probably uh, seven seven bushels per tree, which would be uh, 280 pounds of potential fruit. <laughs> yeah, we got maybe two pounds. I'm guessing. <laughs> two pounds, yeah. We got a little bit of work to do. Yeah, we got we got a we got a little bar to. Yeah. to jump over don't we uh, yeah annual pruning whether you really know exactly what you're doing or not um, is still essential to throw vigor back in that tree mm -hmm. so um, you know as, if you come out here and make some cuts is better than not doing anything at all because it keeps stimulates the growth in that tree and makes it want to want to grow we have a lot of well the first problem I see is that you have like three different leaders uh, you have one here one here and one here which one central leader would be a lot better. We can, we can kind of make it into three different leaders, but um, if you have one central leader and then you try to get some good horizontal branches off of there like that, um, these good horizontal branches, you see all these are fruit buds. You wanna get you know, a good central leader up through there and then get branches off the sides. Anything, when this tree was little, this stuff was probably extremely strong and had really upright things. They should have actually been been cut off um, with like a bevel cut like that, and then it'll shoot another one that's out a little bit flatter. So, um, so you're talking about like this? 
Yeah, yeah, like anything really, really strong when you initially plant that tree should be cut off. You you really want one strong one strong leader up the middle and then you want kind of weaker side branches mm -hmm. off the sides. And for these wildlife plantings, I would <clears throat> I would leave your your first set of branches up about this high because you want to be kind of above that browse line. Anything, once you take these cages off, it'll just, you know, they'll just nip and bite all the buds off anyway, so. What can we do to make this one more productive? I mean, b basically, is this one beyond the point of repair? Uh, no, nothing's ever beyond the point of repair. I think we can, um, we'll go and, and cut some of this interior growth out. <clears throat> I'm going to shape it back <clears throat> to try to get one one central leader, I think probably probably this one. So I may cut some of these other branches down or try to turn them out to try to weaken them a little bit. And um, we'll try to regrow that one as our central. And then uh, as we cut it, we'll, we'll actually invigorate that tree. So anything we do is gonna, gonna help it. So, and then some of this type stuff that's coming up straight through there, we'll get rid of that to get some more light back in the tree there. Hmm. So, so even though we're taking branches out, we're making the tree more productive. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, I think that's the maybe the the thing that we look at and we think we can't cut the branches out because that's where the apples have to grow yeah. from. But yeah. what you're really saying is the vertical ones are less useful than the horizontal branches. Yes. Uh -huh. Is there a problem uh, or issues that a guy could run into with pollination and timing of frost and all that sort of thing too? I mean, is it possible that I was just getting unlucky for a few years? Yeah, the one thing... Uh, I see that's an issue here is you have so much vegetation around here and it's really thick. If you get a cold frosty morning, there's nowhere for that air to air to go. Okay. If you're on a what I call a blind ridge um, where you either have really open timber to the sides or just like a pasture or something that goes down and it only backs up to one you know thick area, then that's better. When you have all this thick growth around here, that, that cold air tends to pocket in here and then you get more frost issues. Hmm. So. so once it flowers and, and you get any kind of, uh, how cold does it have to get before that it kills that flower? There's a, there's kind of a graph or whatever that'll, that'll show you, but um, you know, typically if you're in that 28 range, you, you'll be okay during bloom. If you fall much below that, then, um, then you can start to have, have some damage. When is the best time to plant? The best time to plant would be around this time of year. Um, so this this being the first week of March. First week of March, yeah. We're we're getting ready to plant next week. So as long as the ground's not too wet, if you if you plant when it's real wet, then um, you know it can kind of compact and and you know inhibit your root growth. But it, you know it's pretty dry right now. It'd be a perfect time to plant a tree. Like the rootstock, I I recommend is like a bud 118. So you're probably at um, 12 feet you know between trees and and 20 feet between 20 to 22 feet between your drive middles if you're going to leave a place to brush hog and stuff like that yeah the biggest thing i see with like these wildlife plantings is people let the weeds grow up and around them and that that's just gets them off to a really bad start if you can get um there's a ground cover like a permanent ground cover like i think i put it in that in that article it's like a dewitt and it can be a 20 year ground cover but you can just take a piece of that you know cut a slit in it and put it in there and put some dirt around the edges and then you don't have to worry about competition from weeds for the next 20 years and then i put the plastic tubing on there it was supposed to be to keep the rabbits from chewing the bark during the winter i guess yeah um, i don't know how useful that is but that was one thing i read when i was planting that you should yeah, you can do that, or we um, we just take a white latex paint with a like a rubber glove, and put a bunch of hot flakes in there and stuff like that, and then just kind of go up there and paint that trunk. That'll keep uh, groundhogs, rabbits, anything from chewing on there. Uh -huh. But um, we we sometimes call those groundhog ladders because because <laughs> they, they can right they can climb right up them and get up <laughs> in there. But um, First thing I'm going to try to do is reestablish a central leader, which it looks like this one's our best one. So I'm going to get rid of a lot of the competing wood that's kind of in the middle with that one so that that one kind of reestablish itself at, as a center. That is, uh, <clears throat> that's called a thinning cut. I totally cut that branch off. Um, we're going to do that with some of this upright growth here. 
So on this branch, we, we kind of got a pretty, pretty nice branch coming out there and we left some of these spurs here, which these are all fruit buds on there. Um, and this branch here has some too. Uh, normally we would probably take one of these out, probably that one because it's competing with that one, but it's a pretty decent branch, so I'm gonna leave it. All right, in the middle here, we wanna cut a lot of this middle stuff out of here to kind of bring more sunlight back into the tree there. Anything that's going back in the tree, um, we'll take those out. You have a pretty nice branch coming out here. You have some, I'm gonna check these fruit buds. I was just checking to make sure there's no winter damage. There's no reason why they shouldn't bloom and, and set fruit. They're, they're nice and green on the, on the inside there. So. What is your approach to, to uh, repositioning the branches? I mean, does it... Yeah, if I'm gonna tie down a branch, we normally just uh, try, to, try to loop it like that. Well, actually. If you have a heavier gauge wire, you can just loop it around there. And then as it grows, it pushes it out. And it'll just kind of pull it down, but it won't, it won't girdle that tree. Mm -hmm. um, we, we do some tying, but mostly spreading. So that's um, the idea. That's the reason that you do it, is to take something that's more upright and, and pull it. Yeah, that more upright growth really is very vegetative. It doesn't produce a lot of buds and stuff. The flatter you get it, the more some guys are actually like pulling them down below horizontal. And then they, they'll produce buds all the way up and down to them. Hmm. So we're doing. Yeah. We're gonna reestablish this here as like our central leader. So I'm gonna take this competition away here. And we're actually gonna have like a double central leader. We're gonna have have one here and one here. One there. That's actually a pretty pretty nice branch. That would be a an ideal branch to tie down or spread or something. And if you, if, like I say, if you want to take a branch out, but maybe grow a new one, you can do that, that type cut there and it'll shoot off a new one right there. You want to always head that tree like that. At a 45? Yeah. So then you kick out. And that'll shoot a new bud up there, but it'll invigorate the whole entire tree. Huh. So. Just by clipping the top off. Just by clipping the top off. Yeah. I'll be darned. You know, you want weak wood coming off your side, like this tree, if it would be pretty pretty nice tree actually if you come up through here and and spread spread these out and we have good angles on all these and we've headed the top and um you know so it it looks pretty pretty good so if i'm going to spread and spread this branch out you try to find a little knot or something like that where that spreader will stick in there and now we've put that branch out here and it'll start setting buds all the way along along the sides of it. If when it's up like that, it only wants to set them out at the very end. I think we've done probably the best we can do with with this for now. Um, this is really the the what I'd like people to focus on is is just picture this tree down on the ground, and you have this nice strong leader here, and you have these weaker branches coming off you don't you don't want anything like half the size of this leader coming off of there and and then you have them at a nice like 45 degree angle and then we we uh headed the top of that tree to invigorate it so so really like from here up is perfect <laughs> you know from down here we'll uh you have some good stuff so we're not going to take all that out uh but um yeah i, I think it it should uh it should do good by cutting it, we'll you know reinvigorate it, get some fertilizer on there. It should um, should should do pretty good. Okay, we're at a different spot now. This is one that I planted, or the family and I planted, uh, back in I think it's 2011, maybe is, is when we put this in. And unfortunately, we caught a really dry summer, and we didn't get any rain from about the first part of June, maybe June 1, all the way through, and sometime into August before it started to rain. And we brought water to these trees for a while, and then I just finally gave up on it and said either they're gonna live or they're gonna die. And as it turned out, most of them died. Uh, we put 60 in here, and I think we've got maybe about 10 or 12 left. Uh, and and uh, Eli's gonna talk now about how to shape one of these younger trees. We went through the whole process of what to do with a tree that was 
in that neighborhood of about nine growing seasons old. So here's one that's in that four or five growing seasons old. And the first thing he commented on was the fact that the tree should be a lot bigger, uh, that we're not getting the full production out of these trees. And before we're all done, I'm sure we'll go over a checklist of what we need to do to get these things remedied and, and get back to where they should be. But I'll just hand it over to Eli now, and he's gonna talk about what you would do with a tree that looks like this at this age in order to, to get it so that it looks like it's supposed to when it's a couple years older. This is fairly typical of a, of a young tree. You have some branches on there that are, you know, maybe a little bit upright because they don't have fruit to, to bring them out yet. Um, this tree looks like it was headed, but it doesn't have uh, a very good central leader. You have all this kind of stuff coming off of there. Um, so we're going to try to clean that up a little bit. Uh, you know, we have some good growth here and some dead growth there. We'll try to cut that out a little bit and give you the basic uh, framework for, for a young tree. This branch is, is um, still less than half the width of this uh, central leader, so I think it's okay. But it's at a really bad angle. It's going to end up growing up like that, so we need to shoot that thing out. Uh, it's a little low, but we'll, we'll be all right with it. Since we don't really have a branch coming off here, we can make this like our main branch coming this way. So we'll just cut, cut that there. Then you want to head these side branches, like I said. Um, just give them a little cut, and then that puts energy back into the tree. Uh, right here, this one's coming kind of back into the tree at a weird angle, so we'll just cut that out of there. Um, this one looks like like it has a dead limb there, so we'll take that off of there. And this one forks. I'd rather for the first for, for, uh, first few years to just keep like a single one there. That way we can get some uh, length on it. Ideally, those limbs would have started about here for a wildlife planting. When you got that tree, you probably should have just cut those off and started them up probably about chest height and that way they come out over the top of your cage there. And this one actually has a lot of buds on it. Um, you know, it should, I don't know how much fruit we want to leave on a tree like this because it'll take some of the, some of the vigor back out of the tree. Um, this is another cut you can do. It's more commonly used in peaches, but I'm going to just show it for you, but it's called a bench cut. And so you're basically making it look like a bench and, it, and it'll help you bring, bring that limb back. So we wanna bring, bring that limb down you know, about like that. that like I say, for, for a fruit tree plot, that's probably a little low. We probably want that you know, a little bit higher, but I think, I think it'll kind of give you the idea of where we wanna be. This top has got a, Got a lot of issues here. We're gonna try to figure out if we can fix it. So we have a, a decent little branch coming off here. Um, not sure what what's causing all that, but um, I'm gonna cut that there. Um, this is actually probably the strongest branch of this whole top of that tree. So. Bill, I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to do that. <laughs> so now we have a couple more branches coming off to the sides there. And we've reestablished this is one central leader up there. We don't have all that junk going around there. And then we're just going to head that back just a little bit. We're going to bring these back into balance. This one's a little big there. Uh, nip the sides of these there. So. You can get the basic idea of what we have. We have, um, typically you want four or five scaffold limbs. It's coming out, like I say, for a wildlife planting, cut all the ones below like, below like your chest height, and then kind of bring them, spread them out. We have one strong central leader here. We have some weaker branches off the sides. And then you want to keep the strongest one there in the center, take all the other stuff, stuff out, and then, um, then we just head those back and that'll reinvigorate that tree. And in a tree like that, I would probably still use, uh, 
maybe a pound of urea now and then come back um, say in May sometime and put another pound on there and try to keep try to keep that as weed free as possible. So the first thing we're going to start with is is some equipment basics. Uh, I, I use bypass loppers, sharp, uh, and I also use a folding saw. Almost all my pruning can be done with these two pieces of equipment. If you have to fill the gas and start it up, you've probably waited too long to do the pruning. Part of what makes an apple tree produce apples is the stress involved with pruning. And so if you look back here, these are all water sprouts. And the first thing you need to know is this is one year old or two year old wood. It isn't going to bear apples. All right. So we need to get rid of these things that are going to grow vegetation and take away from the apple production. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close my saw up before I, I trip on it. All right. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to make this first cut. All right, I've decided to take that whip out. Now, there are right ways and there are wrong ways to do this. And you can see that I've cut right there at the ridge in the collar. And by cutting right there, I'm going to tell that wound to seal over. And I'm also going to tell it, hopefully, not to send out a lot more whips. So when I look at this tree as a whole, anything that is broken needs to come off. Anything that's going vertical, needs to come out of there. And then we need to look at the overall shape because these branches that were really well formed several years ago are getting ready to bear fruit. We need to provide sunlight to those trees or to those branches. And so I can go through and I can take off anything that's rubbing. I can take off anything that is going straight up and straight down. And once we're done with that, we'll look at that overall shape. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to start making these cuts on this guy. All right, take him out. If you look at, at this one, um, something happened to this branch. It has now died and I want to take off dead branches. I don't want the decay to start in that tree. And so I, I look at these buds, they've died, but I've got a nice healthy branch here. So I'm just going to come in with my lopper. I'm going to break that off. And now I see that this branch is coming into here. So I have to make some decisions which way this branch is going to go. I've got one coming off this way. And you can see all of these little spurs on that, on that branch. That is what's going to produce apples. All right. So by us forcing those branches to go off horizontally, they're going to bear a lot more fruit. If there is something directly above or below another branch, that's going to be a problem because it's going to impede sunlight. And I have to look, I've got a really nice branch here and a really nice branch here. I've got one that's going quite vertical. All right. Um, my goal is to let these guys, which are hanging out over the fenced area. Again, I want these two branches to take and bear the most fruit out over where the deer can get them. So I'm going to take all of this production and place it into these two branches. So I'm going to take this middle one out. All right, I'm going to give the deer some food. So on all pruning cuts, there's a right way and a wrong way to cut. What I have here is an example of the wrong way and the right way to cut. And you're looking for the swell on that branch, all right? If I cut the wrong way and I use a flat cut, and so I make it such that I cut right from the top down, I create a wound on that tree that is really quite large. There's several square inches of, of open wood that has to be covered. If I look where I should cut it, right here, you can see the size of the pruning cut is much smaller. What would be left on the tree then are the callus cells that will form the seal over that wound. All right, so you always want to find the right location to cut. And on this tree over here, what we want to do, we have this branch that is going vertical. All right, it's not producing a lot of apples. I'm going to look right here and I, I'm going to see that there's a swell right in here. And I'm going to take my saw and I'm going to start and I'm going to cut that branch off.
All right. So I'm gonna take care of that one. I'm gonna finish, and normally what I do is I work from the center of the tree out, and I look at, at these guys in terms of, are they bearing any fruit? Are they, and a lot of times you can't always get to the side you need, so you have to move around. This one, I've had some mortality here, so I'm gonna back it down to here. I'm always gonna find a union to cut back to. I never wanna leave stubs. When we leave a stub on a tree, what this is telling this tree is to produce new branches and not fruit. And so my goal here is not to produce more branches. So what I need to do is I've done the gross pruning. I have to come around the other side, get a better angle on it, take it down to where I will have a collar and a ridge cut because I don't want a branch here. I would rather have the rest of the tree producing fruit close to the branch, following that ridge and that collar. Um, normally when I look at these trees, anything now that's going up comes off, anything coming back in on itself will be cut off. Pruning on, on fruit trees is an annual event. It's always done in the early spring, uh, late winter to early spring when you're out shed hunting is a perfect time to be, to be uh, pruning your apple trees. If you wait too long, you will have uh, more green material that you're going to remove and that's going to stress the tree too much. So I like to do all mine in the early spring. Uh, so now I'm looking here, um, I've got several more upright branches that we need to, to take care of because again, upright branches do not create fruit. So if I look at these branches here, uh, one, they are all pretty much sprouts coming off past pruning cuts and they're all going back into the center of the tree. And so I want to take off these because they're not bearing fruit. They're going to make vegetation. Find that, there we go. Uh, again, I don't need them coming back in the center of the tree. Let's grab my other set of loppers. We're still faced with a really nice branch right here. Uh, they've pulled it down again. Um, to make it horizontal and you can see once you do that all of the spurs that will form on those branches and those spurs are only going to grow about a half an inch maybe a quarter inch per year just to set a new fruit bud all your vegetation growth is going to be out here and so we manipulate the fruit on older wood so by me coming in now working around all these other branches in here there we go all right so we're looking at that i see on this branch really good fruit sets and i have a branch that comes off the bottom and crosses i don't like things that cross because they're going to rub and create damage on that tree anything going straight up again takes away production of fruit so right here is a good example we have all of these really nice spurred branches they're all coming out at about a 45 degree angle, which is perfect for fruit production. The problem is they're all stacked on top of each other. And so even though we're gonna take off some spurs and some production, what we're doing is we're putting that growth onto branches that will produce more and bigger, sweeter apples. I want a minimum of two to three feet between this set of scaffolding branches and the ones up above. And really, it's got a perfect distance between. So what, what could happen or what should happen is this entire branch from here up should be cut off. And what you'll have then is a double set of horizontal scaffolding branches. This tree will produce tons more apples than if you let that vertical center grow. I'm going to get down, take the sawzall. We're going to cut it off right here, take the top off. And then during the growing season, we're going to come in with some cotton twine and we're going to pull this down. Okay. So we've taken the top off of that tree and we really now want to limit the amount of material that we take off from here on out. We've removed quite a bit of that material. And we want this tree, we don't want to shock the tree. So we're done working on this tree for this year. Well, that's it for today's episode. 
I do have a lot more trees on this property to prune. I mean, we've talked about hundreds of trees and I definitely, you know, could get around and do a few more before the spring is over. I don't have enough time to do everything that needs to be done here on this farm the way it is. So generally I end up uh, picking those things that either are screaming the loudest or the things that are the most pressing that have to be done. So I'm gonna be shifting gears now toward planting and burning. And those are gonna be the big uh, topics that I'm gonna be covering here over the coming weeks. Well, thanks for joining me. We'll see you back here soon for another episode of Dream Farm. And remember to always dream big.